Well, greetings, gardeners. It's uh, tie-dye Friday, uh, so I got the uh, the bright shirt on here today. Now, most of you who follow my channel know I've been absent for a little while. It's been different. Uh, the extreme drought in California has made gardening so difficult. And I think about the only things to brag about uh, lately it would be that I did manage to pull off a crop of dryland farm tomatoes. Uh, they were very good and I did it with only a little bit of water early in the year. Late in the year we ripened the whole crop on dry vines and they're still out there uh, looking dry but still doing pretty well. That was that was special. Uh, I had uh, some success using polymer starch in containers to raise plants. I've got a beautiful crop of cucumbers still going despite the drought uh, because I used uh, soil moist to enhance the container soil, hold extra moisture. Other than that, you know, a garden this year, it's a pain. The, the birds are all starving and going crazy with the drought and so they're eating apples and blah blah blah. Every animal in the neighborhood is like, <laughs> stop in Bill's backyard! God, get it! You know, because it's just, uh, it's reached a level of frenzy in the wildlife after four years with hardly any rain out here. So, you know, I haven't really felt all that enthusiastic about showing off my garden. It's, it's doing alright. Uh, uh, and then, of course, we've been uh, uh, painting the house, uh, fixing the stucco on the walls, uh, sorting out our possessions and packing things and really getting ready to sell the house here in California. So, you know, if there's anybody out there who thinks they have a dream of living in the Bay Area and want a ready-to-go awesome garden, uh, the house will be up for sale soon. Here's your chance. Uh, and then, so that's you know leads to uh, uh, relocating to the other house in Hawaii is coming up. So I've been pretty busy. Painting the walls has kept me uh, pretty well occupied, and I haven't had a lot of time for videos. So my reason for producing this video is I want to talk all about stinging insects. Okay. Um, generally, my life I've had a truce with venomous snakes poisonous spiders, stinging bugs, um, they inhabit the same environments that I do, the garden, the outdoors, and so on. Most of them love the wilderness. And so we come in contact often enough. Uh, it's been successful most of my life to just kind of let them know that no oh, me and me harm. I usually leave me alone. I leave them alone. I don't have any big problems with it. Uh, bees, well, bees now have been a little different. Uh, just because being a gardener, bees like flowers. Uh, and so I'm always in the midst of bees. Also, there was a time in my life where I was a beekeeper. I had uh, up to 10 hives at a point in time. Uh, when I lived back in the Midwest, I don't keep them anymore. But so because of all this contact with the places that bees live and by handling bees and so on, I've probably been stung well over 300 times in my life. This is not unusual for me uh, to take an insect sting. Uh, generally, I, I don't really give them much mind. It's, it's about the same for me as it is for most people when they get a mosquito bite. A little well holds out for about 20, 24 hours or so get sore and then it passes away and uh, really leaves a little, very little reaction. I, I once received 36 stings in the butt. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. I couldn't sit down for 24 hours, but there was really no lasting damage. Um, my butt looks the same now as it did beforehand. Uh, but every once in a while, and it has to do with circumstance, I have taken a bee sting that was extraordinary. And like I say, most of them just a little red welt. That's all there is to it. And as long as the stinger ends up in muscle or fat tissue, you know, uh, that, that doesn't really amount to very much. But bee venom is, you know, ounce for ounce, it's as toxic as rattlesnake venom. And if you happen to ever get it injected directly into your bloodstream, 
or if you are one of these people who are definitely very allergic to the bee venom, I mean, everybody is basically uh, toxified by bee venom. Bee venom is poisonous to everybody on earth. It doesn't matter who the heck you are. But like I say, most of us never, never get a direct hit. The snake, on the other hand, has such a marvelous delivery system. It's got a lot of muscles. It's got hypodermic fangs. It's got great big poison glands. So I mean, a rattlesnake can really pump that stuff into you. A cobra can really pump you up full of venom. But a bee, it's got a weak little stinger, and it relies on its legs, you know, to push that stinger into your skin. You usually can't get it in very deep. Um, and so usually there's no reaction, but I have had a few stings before where like I had my knuckles clenched like this and a vein raised up and a bee came down and hit me right in the vein. Well, it blew up my hand, all my fingers, my forearm and my arm all the way to the armpit with a single bee sting. Now at that time, uh, the doctor tried to tell me, well, you have become allergic to bee stings. I looked at him, I said, dude, <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, um, the bee venom will affect anybody if it gets in the wrong place. And yeah, I took about a hundred stings after the doctor told me I was allergic and nothing happened. Right? So, okay, doctor was wrong. Uh, they don't like to think outside the box very much. If I spent that much money on education and that many years getting the paperwork, I'd probably believe what I thought I knew anyway. Right? So, anyway. Monday, I was out at a client's place, and I was grooming perennial flowers. I looked down, and there was some cat mint that was getting scruffy looking, and I thought, well, I'll grab that plant hard here in my left hand like this, and I'll take my pruning shears and go underneath the stems and cut a lot of it off in just one pass. Seemed like a smart idea. I do that a lot. Um, and unfortunately, I had forgotten my gloves. They weren't with me. So I was working barehanded. You know, well, pruning off cat mint without a glove, a hey, big deal, right? Well, there was a bee in there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when I crushed that plant as hard as I could, the bee stinger was driven by the force of my hand directly into the veins uh, in the palm here that m make this area of the wrist where if you were planning to end it all, you might cut through these, you know? They're pretty major veins, okay. Well, I drove a bee stinger deep into that vein. Uh, it was a very unusual sensation because I knew immediately that the venom was actually beginning to flow through my entire system. It got into the bloodstream and it just started going like a snake bite. And every place in the body it hit, the body reacted. It went to my ears, my ears blew up. It went around my eyes, it blew my eyes up. It, it went into my feet, my feet swelled up and I just kept going through my body and I went, oh my God, this is not ordinary. And well, before I knew it, I had my tongue all swelled up and I'm going, oh, 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 and I couldn't hardly talk. Lucky for me, it didn't go to the point that happens with some people where it closed the air passages. That was, I could breathe. If I work carefully, I could drink a glass of water, which I did. Uh, but I was pretty swelled up, but it wasn't stopping. And so I decided, well, my history with bees, you know, so many stinks, I'm just going to sit down and take a rest. So I sat down and I took a rest. Well, when I got up later on, I had a pain in the middle of my chest with radio streaming and feeling like it's coming out from there into the arms and all that. And I said, yeah, I know what this is. It's a heart attack. And I got Man. And, and it was probably also the ulcers in my esophagus were also inflamed too. So I had inflamed ulcers and I was having a heart attack from the darn venom. And so I set myself into the emergency ward. If you ever want to get into the emergency ward in front of everybody else, just walk up to the window and go, boof, 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 boof. The lady let me right in. They begin treating me for a bee sting. But then realized, after taking my blood pressure, that my blood pressure was through the rough. So they put me on the EKG. They found out, wow, the EKG was irregular. My heart was missing beats and so on. Uh, well, if you get a heart full of bee venom, you're going to have some problems to it, trust me. So they run me into the cath lab uh, and they put a barium dye in me and put me under a scanner and the doctor found three blood clots lodged in arteries of my heart. Well, this is very strange. Okay, this is very strange because 
I had just finished up a full physical uh, in the last two months that had an EKG, it had a heart ultrasound, we had total blood work, you know, doctor come back said, yeah, your, your sugar's good in your blood, your cholesterol level is fine, you know, your blood pressure is acceptable, and uh, this is the only thing the doc could find that was wrong with me a couple months ago was, Bill, you're too fat, you gotta go on a diet, which I did, okay, <laughs> it's, I haven't reached the end of that yet, but you know, in the last, uh, I don't know, I guess we're probably 10, 12 weeks maybe since this, I've lost 10 pounds. So I'm happy about that. And because of it, and I've been riding my bicycle, you know, and so on, and uh, I have never felt better in my life. Uh, it just really, I was feeling just great. Uh, everything was perfect. The morning before I pruned the cat mint, I was feeling great. Uh, and so there's no way that anybody's going to try to convince me that I had those blood clots before I got this bee sting. Well, the doctors told me, no, 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 you had the clots in there. The bee sting just brought you in here. You're lucky that you got stung by a bee so we could find this, you know, and so on. So they did the procedure, the angioplasty that they do for these silly things. And, you know, there I am in the hospital. So I was positive, though, that there had been been nothing wrong with me until this sting. I was positive of it. And so I started doing research and sure enough, there it was. Kaunis syndrome. Uh, I'm not sure about the pronunciation, but it's K-O-U-N-I-S syndrome. And uh, what it amounts to is that when a person takes a really good strike from a wasp particularly, uh, but also from a bee or if you are very allergic to bee venom, uh, the bee venom can get into the system and it starts to create a cascade where the arteries begin to expand and contract rapidly. And so you get this rapid expansion and contraction of the arteries. Well, if you happen to be like me, if you're over 50 or over 60, uh, you know, in my case, you know, most of us by now, we got some plaque in the arteries. That's all there is to it. It might not be bothering your health or anything, but uh, you can have these plaques that build up over time. You know, it's like crud in the pipes. And it's in there. Most of us have it if we're uh, becoming elderly, so to speak. If you're a senior citizen, I'm sure you have some plaques in your artery. And, well, what happens is as the arteries expand and contract rapidly, they rupture the plaques. And so the plaques come loose, they will run through your system, they can jam in the heart, they can also go to the brain, and they can cause stroke. Uh, it's pretty serious stuff. And I mean, um, for a guy like myself who's taken stinging bugs cavalier most of my life and say, oh, yeah, another bee sting, whoopee, big deal, you know. I'm going to have to reassess my situation here because knowing that this can actually occur, there are about a thousand people a year that die from this syndrome, most of them over 50. Um, if you've got a young bloodstream and you haven't got a lot of plaques, you'll probably survive it without any trouble. But if you've got any crud built up in your pipes and you start a spasm in the arteries, it's most likely going to dislodge something and create all sorts of different problems. Well, the doctor, he was still not listening to me, so I had to print an English article uh, off out of the web, out of a medical journal, and stick it in his face. And, well, of course, he still wasn't going to accept the fact that the patient knew more about his own body and health than the doctor did. So they sent me out claiming that, well, you have a heart condition. Of course, he's denying the fact that all the blood work said there was no cholesterol problems. They did you know, ultrasounds of the heart, and the lady who did the ultrasound says, no, nah, it's like a horse's heart, man. It's just like really steady and strong. Um, the EKGs were fine afterwards and so on. So, I mean, I had no symptoms that indicated that there might be anything wrong with my heart or my blood. Uh, yet the doctor, you know, he's going to stick to his pat thing. So he will not accept the definition of Kaunas syndrome. Uh, on the other hand, you may have a physician in your area that's a little more progressive and might listen. Uh, I find that, generally speaking, doctors don't uh, appreciate it when a patient thinks he may know more about his own body and health than the doctor does. doctor thinks he's the specialist. But I'm telling you, I'm the guy that went through what happened. Dude, this was a full-body bee sting. Okay, it was a full body bee sting. I never felt anything like it in my entire life. It was awful. Can you imagine everything from your toes to your ears to your tongue to even finally the heart, you know, all being stung by a bee? Basically, that's what happened. Everything along the line all reacted to that venom. Anyway, so 
The only thing I'm warning the rest of you about is if you're as cavalier about stinging bugs as I am, you best start wearing your gloves when you're pruning flowers. I will never forget mine. I'm going to go home from work if I don't have my gloves. Because the last thing I want to do is have another one of these episodes and get a stroke next time. Because it goes to my brain. And if it went to my brain, I did nothing like gloves all the time. Just like to the lady at the emergency ward. You know, we don't want to see that happen. Countess Syndrome. Beware if you're an older person. to hear from me for about another three weeks, all right? So don't panic, I'm still alive.